Okay, with that said, we can continue on with the process of setting up our plans. I'll just leave this on. I, it doesn't matter if it shows in the section view. We're not going to drag this to, to a sheet anyway. So now, let's go back to our first floor power plan. Now that our levels are all set up. And as you can see over here on the right, the associated level of this power plan is now level 01, which is what we changed the level to. Notice that it is grayed. That's an indication that that cannot be changed. Once you've created a plan view associated with a level, you cannot change what level that view is associated with. It would be nice if I could merely uh, duplicate this view. See down here, duplicate. If I could copy this view and then just change the level to level two, for example, well, we can't do that. We have to actually create views for each level. But before I do that, I want to show you how to deal with uh, reining in some of this extra stuff around our plan. Um, let me just show you what happens. If I was to drag this power plan onto a sheet, which is how we set up sheets. Let's go down to a sheet. Floor plan power, sheet E301. Double click that. We have the default Autodesk title block, which we will deal with later. But for now, let's say we wanted to set this up. We would drag our power plan view for first floor over here and drag it on. Eh, it's pretty big. Let's say it can fit. But we have our elevation um, links. We've got all these extra lines. It's really a lot more than we need to see. Well, how do we fix that? Well, we can crop our view with a device called a scope box. So let's go back to our actual view, the plan view. We can add what's called a scope box to rein this in, but before I do that, I want to create a coordination, overall coordination view. And you'll see why in a minute. So what I'm gonna do is duplicate, right here, duplicate this view. There's choices for duplicating. I can duplicate just the model portion of it, or I can duplicate the model and all the detailing. So if I had already added some annotative elements like notes or room names or, or tags, things like that, this will duplicate everything. So I typically will duplicate everything just to be sure. So duplicate with detailing and it creates a copy of that plan. And I'm gonna rename this plan, go down to rename and I want to call this an overall coordination view um, or just an overall view. And I'm going to use lowercase because this is just a working view. It's not a view that we will publish. I'm also going to um, put a zero zero in front of it just to help um, put things in the, a nice display order to help me as I add more plans. So lowercase overall floor plan lowercase meaning it's just a working drawing. So now I have an overall floor plan and it stacks above the others so I have a, a good order. And now in this overall plan and, and I can see that that's what I'm currently looking at overall floor plan up here but also it's bold. Let's go to a thing called a scope box. It's actually a view element. So up here at the tab up top go to the view tab and over here all these things here. Here's one called a scope box. Controls the visibility of datum elements like grids, levels, and reference planes and specific views. So this will, in a sense, crop um, my view down, but still show the grids the way I want to. So scope box. Now I just need to pick the boundaries of my scope box. I can just pick anywhere and then pick the bottom right anywhere. I'm just going just outside the building boundaries. Now, once you've put that in, you can drag this around and put it where you want. For example, I've got some building elements 
that kind of stick out beyond the corner, so I probably want to keep those visible. So I'll make that just beyond that. And this one here, this is kind of a site element, looks like bike racks. I don't need that in my building plan view. I may need that on a site plan, but right now I'm just creating a building plan view. So pull that down, uh, check all your boundaries. This one here, I can pull this in a little tighter. I just want to make this cropped to get rid of any unneeded things. So escape out of that. Oh, the last thing I want to do when I select on that is let's give it a name. Over here on the right, um, scope box, give it a name that's descriptive. I'm going to call this in all capitals. Um, no, not over. This is actually a building um, scope box. Hit enter and then apply. So now escape out of that. Now I have a scope box. Now this is a three-dimensional uh, entity. Um, if we go to our 3D view here on the left, there's our view. Now this dashed green line is the scope box called building, which we just created. And you can tell, even in this 3D view, that it's, it doesn't extend all the way up to the top of the building. So we want this box to work on all of our floors, so we need to extend it up high. So just highlight it, then click on it, and you'll get some um, grips. Right here, kind of hidden in the middle, is the up-down grip. I can select that and drag this top of this box above my building. It doesn't matter how far above, just as long as I have my whole building included. Now, this scope box in three dimensions will limit what is shown on my plan view. Okay, so I've done that. I can get rid of the 3D view. And now here's my scope box. What I want to do now is go to my actual production view of the power plan and apply that scope box to this view. So over here on the right, in all of this properties, down here under extents, you get thing called scope box. Right now there's no scope box assigned to this view. Um, this is one thing that is not um, included within the view template, so I can change it here. Click on that, click on the building that I just did, scope box, and apply it. And there we go. You can see all of the extraneous items are gone. It pulled the grid bubbles into a nice display. Um, and, and that's a good point that even if I go back to my overall, and if I play with grid, the grids, let's say I move these way out here, escape out, back to my view, it still shows them appropriately. So the scope box controls how those grids are shown.